So we want to talk about blood supply to the brain. And the old way to talk about this is to call it the circle of Willis. That is kind of the old school way to describe this. Coming up through the neck are vertebral arteries. They merge to form a basilar artery. So these are called vertebral arteries. And always remember that when we make a drawing, it has to have A to designate artery, it has to have V to designate vein, it has to have N to designate nerve, it has to have M to designate muscle. If we don't have that, then it might get counted off. It's got to be perfect, okay? There are two vertebrals. They come up through the transverse foramen in the neck, and, or foramen up to be more exact. They form the basilar artery. Then there is a bifurcation, and this is the posterior cerebral artery. There are some communicating arteries that connect from the posterior cerebral to the incoming internal carotid, which then gives rise, this is the internal carotid, which then gives rise to the middle cerebral That's the middle cerebral artery. This is the internal carotid. So we have that on both sides. Let's make that nicely. This is called the posterior communicating artery. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Right there, right here and right here. Then extending forward, we have the anterior cerebral arteries, which supply the frontal lobes of the brain. And then there is an anterior communicating artery. So this would be called the anterior cerebral artery. And then this little connector right here is the anterior communicating artery. Am I, am I saying all this right? Marvelous. So let's talk about this just for a minute, just talk about clinically. The, the beautiful thing about the blood supply to the brain is that you have vertebral artery supply and you have internal carotid. If the carotids get blocked or choked with fat or something, that's not the only blood supply that the, the brain depends on. It does matter. All of these different sources need to be patent. Let's say that. Posterior cerebral would, would go to serve the back part of the brain. There are also some cerebellar arteries and pontine arteries. There's other named ones, but like I said, I'm just doing a basic framework. And if you and I could learn the basic framework of how to draw this, then you could add the other little branches in with no problem later. But if you can just learn this, this is a basic fundamental layout of the circle of Willis. One of the most common stroke areas is a middle, middle cerebral stroke. The middle cerebral artery serves the side of the, of the head, the temporal area, so a lot of times people who have strokes in this area have speech difficulties, dyslexia, and so forth. The anterior cerebral arteries go to the front part of your brain, which is your personality, frontal lobe. Probably posterior, posterior cerebral would be more like occipital. So I think that's good. I think that is a good basic layout of the circle of Willis, the blood supply to the brain.